Is this the best version of the White Stripes Elephant? We're gonna compare this to the Mono Edition, the 20th Anniversary, and the OG. Let's give these records a spin and see how they sound. I wanted this video initially to be a comparison of the new UHQR 45 edition of Elephant versus the Third Man Vault Mono Double X edition. And then Felipe from the Jazz Bums, who, if you're not aware, are an excellent channel of guys that go live every Friday and have other interviews and the like, all focused on jazz, and they dive really deep. Definitely subscribe to them if you like jazz. Felipe saw the first video that I did about the UHQR, and he is a huge fan of the group and of Jack White, and he graciously offered to send me his OG copy to compare, which completely just blew me away that somebody would be nice enough to do that. And after getting it and going back and forth on my findings with it, I then decided to change the video a little bit more and actually have Felipe on this video to talk about this. So he's gonna join us here later in the video and offer his thoughts from a super fan of the group, which is a great perspective to me since I only recently started getting into the White Stripes and Jack White. And then while I was getting ready to talk with Felipe, I realized that my good friend Frank who I also want to bring on the channel soon at some point, has a copy of the black and red clear smoke 20th anniversary reissue. So I borrowed that as well. So what started as reviewing two pressings has now turned into four with an interview with Felipe. So this is for all the people in the comments of the first video. They might have had an issue with me talking about the packaging and the look of the record longer than talking about the sound. This video is all about the sound and even more diving deeper into the music itself. So let's compare the OG, the UHQR, the Mono Double X, and the newest 20th anniversary reissue. This is a subjective review. This is my opinion of how it sounds in my house on my stereo. So it might be completely different for you. You might have a completely different outlook. If you do, definitely let me know in the comments and let me know what you think. Starting with the OG, thank you again, Felipe, for sending this out. This is from 2003, recorded to A-Track Reel to Reel in 2002, mastered by Transformation and pressed by United Record Pressing. Disc one is white opaque and disc two is red translucent. This is what I would call near mint media condition. The jacket's probably VG plus with all the originals, the inner sleeves and the lyric sleeves. Near mint copies on Discogs go around $75 with mint copies will run around a hundred dollars and above to put that into perspective. I listened to this first out of the bunch but I had already heard the UHQR and the mono prior to hearing this since I own them and my take is this is loud and it's in your face as this record was intended to be but sometimes it results in some distortion and there's a lot of surface noise on this pressing and sibilance check check, check, check one, one sibilance, sibilance. 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 Check, check, check two, similar. The scratchy S's that you would hear sometimes, I don't know if I'm using that correctly, but especially on the softer guitar and vocal tracks, you've got her in your pocket. Lots of distorted S's there. I can handle the noise on the record, but the scratchy S's actually get a little harsh, as does the overall volume at times. That said, it does sound good on lots of the songs. Seven Nation Army definitely rocks hard. The whole record really just sounds raw and in your face, a very live setting, but the loudness can be fatiguing at times, like I mentioned, but that might just be on my stereo. That's how it is to me. Next, we have the Double X Elephant Mono Edition, which is from the Third Man Vault number 55. This was pressed at Third Man Pressing with the lacquer cut by Wes Garland and mastered at Third Man Studio. This is a mono edition, but this record was not recorded in mono. This is a fold down of the stereo tracks into a mono mix done by Jack White and Bill Skibby, featuring unheard bits from the multi-track tapes. The sound, in my opinion, is just not not quite here for this record, or at least it feels like an attempt at something making this feel like a record played on a transistor radio or some small sounding speakers or something like that. It's very compressed along with everything being folded down into the mono. It's very centered, obviously. It sounds very veiled as well. It, like besides it being a mono pressing, it sounds like it has this just overall lack of clarity to it. 
The pressing is good, it's quiet, and the records are flat, and the whole package is really nice. But the thing is with this, it was offered with a third man vault, so the only people that I would really recommend this to are the people that it was made for, who are diehard fans like Felipe or my buddy Frank. If you love Jack White and the White Stripes, this is a really cool record to have. I would not recommend it as the only version of this record to own. You're just missing out on way better sounds from the other mixes. Now we're on to the 20th anniversary Red and Clear Smoke Vinyl. I thought it would be really good to add this one and I'm really glad that Frank had a copy of this because this gives us a really good look at what the OG could be had it been done by Third Man Pressing. This is the Third Man 20th anniversary, somewhat limited edition. They pressed a ton of these, so I don't know how limited it is. As of this video, they're very easy and relatively cheap to get. You can get them for about $30. This comes on red with black smoke and clear with black smoke vinyl. Very awesome looking records in my opinion. This is cut by Wes Garland who also did the double X and again, all done by Third Man at this point. I went right to You've Got Her In Your Pocket and it too has the sibilance issue on it, if it's sibilance, the scratchy S's. I also cleaned this record for Frank and it has a lot of noise, especially on that track, which is where I'm really cued in because it's such a quiet and intimate track. You don't want to be distracted by pops or clicks there. However, the surface noise on this is more of like a crackle, which kind of adds a little nostalgia to it. So it's not really that offensive, especially for a 30 dollar record. This record still has a lot of power to it. Ball and Biscuit, the drums there, and the Seven Nation Army both still kick very hard. This is a cheap, good looking, and for the price, what you get, a very good sounding record. It's a little more truncated and less raw than the OGs. There's a little bit more compression on it, but I would definitely recommend this just to support Third Man directly and because you get brand new, really good looking vinyl and it's a lot cheaper than the OG. The sound is not too far off from it. However, I've been completely spoiled by the UHQR. This is the UHQR 45 RPM edition. This was mastered at Sterling Sound by Ryan K. Smith and pressed at Quality Record Pressings from the original master tapes and of course distributed by Analog Productions. Going through these four songs with these records versus the others, this is definitely the winner and the one to have in my opinion. All of the rawness of the OG is still here, but the OG, like I said, has some issues with sibilance and the overall volume issues. When I put these two records on right after the other without changing the volume, the OG is louder, but it's harsher. This is still very present. I don't have to turn it up, but everything is in its place. And when the band kicks in with Seven Nation Army together at its loudest points, it does not distort at all. And it sounds like each member just has a spot within my stereo image there, which is really awesome. Whereas the OG and the others blend all this sound. And if you want that really raw with somewhat overall distortion on everything centered sound, then cool. But this UHQR offers a way larger soundstage. The sound is outside of the speakers and my headphones. I've heard people talk about 3D imaging of really good records or pressings, or more specifically 45 RPM records. And I can definitely hear it when comparing these two going back and forth. The vocals on all these tracks seem to kind of like float in the center of the image and each instrument has its own dimension versus being one wall of sound. You can crank this UHQR to go even louder than these other pressings as well, which is what is the beauty of these audiophile records. It's taking a raw record like Elephant and putting it into this process. It might not seem like it's as loud as first when you do an AB, but it gets way louder because you can turn it up a lot more. The organ on In the Cold Cold Night has way more detail than just a drone sound in the background the whole time than on the OG. And the S's on You've Got Her In Your Pocket are 100% crystal clear on this pressing. That entire track is unbelievable with a completely silent record. Now, full disclosure here, this is one spot that I should point out. I have to destroy my UHQR copies because though the quality control is very good at QRP, sometimes there are issues. There are some pops on this in You've Got Her In Your Pocket and other tunes. And for $170 for this thing, that's not gonna fly here. So I gotta gut this thing. And it 
breaks my heart to do this and get a new one from Acoustic Sounds, but they will send another. This is something that I encourage anyone who gets UHQRs from them. Hold them to as high a standard as they are putting out there. With all of this hype about this vinyl, it should be flat and it should be flawless. Even if you hear one pop, send that thing back. I can say that their QC is better and better each time. I have had no issues with some of my other previous UHQRs and I'm sad that I had to do it with this one, but I really needed it because I really like that song and I just won't accept it for this. Now, I've said a lot here and I hope to have made some clear points on the sound of these records, but let's bring in someone else to get their opinion, who also happens to be a huge fan of the White Stripes and also a huge fan of really good sounding vinyl records. Felipe from the Jazz Bums is gonna give us some insights into the band and also what we're hearing on these records. I guess all of the White Stripes records or albums are all red, white, and black. Yeah, so that's the, the so Third Man Records is all always about the three. Jack White the third, that's how he he, he signs. Uh, although his uh, White came from Meg, not from him. When they got married, he took her name. He, she didn't take oh. her his name. Yeah, and uh, the this color scheme, uh, red, uh, black, and white, and also three instruments. They would. If you, if you watch a live concert, there's always three instruments, voice, uh, guitar, and drum, or voice, and uh, uh, piano, or organ, whatever, and drum. So it's always also about about the third. And, and a funny thing that every one of the records, there's a song with the word little in title. Little Ghost, huh. Little Cream Soda, uh, you, you, you can just search for it. And Meg, she's, uh, she really loves like old, to old songs. So she would always push for like a Bob Dylan song, or the, even like the Burt Baccarat song was her suggestion. She wanted to put it there. They, they played the last gigs in 2007, officially as a band. They also played, I think 2009, uh, their very last appearance together at the um, Conor O'Brien show. Uh, people thought it would be a comeback or something, but no. Do you, Felipe, have all of the vaults from Third Man? I started number seven. I'm missing a few, which I'm starting to hunt on these cogs. Yeah. Okay. I think the very first, I might be wrong, but I think the very first was Iki Thumb and Mono. Speaking of Mono, with Felipe here, we're going to talk about the UHQR, the original pressing, as well as the Vault uh, Double X Elephant release. Talk about the process of what it was for getting this one and the mastering of this one. For this 20th anniversary, they have been doing 20th anniversary for all, all the records, so I think probably in a year or two, we're going to have uh, Get Behind Me Satan uh, coming soon. So for Elephant, they did a very special thing. They went back to the to the to the multi track, and they mixed down to a mono. And it, it was cool because they, they could find some like hidden treasures in that tape, right? Some uh, versions of some singles that were not released. They came as a seven inch as a bonus in in this box, uh, plus the DVD with the recording, some concerts, uh, and. A mono mix. They made a mono mix out of their multi track. How do I like this mono mix? It's very raw. It sounds like a really, like a, almost like a cassette tape, right? However, it's very, it's, it's very guttural. It's very like in your face. And Seven in Seven Nation Army has some uh, extra bars at the end of the song. It's a different song. I agree with the assessment of it being uh, kind of like a cassette. I kind of said transistor radio. Like it was going, they were going for it being very centered and very just almost like it's coming off of a, a little crappy speaker or something like that like is what i could yeah. imagine they were thinking you know the the mix for what for it is which does kind of lend it to be not necessarily the best comparison when going from this to even as you graciously sent me this OG copy right here. Now, mm -hmm. this OG copy sounds absolutely amazing. And I mean, I like the it, stereo yeah. image, the stereo image on this and the rawness of this um, is just really, really cool. Now, I was looking up information about this. Like, this is the original pressing of this was done at V2 Records. It was, they were on yes. V2 Records. Yeah, okay. but uh, it was a very simple approach. It was recorded in England. I think it was uh, they had like three recording days in April and November of 2002, and uh, and it was released early in 2003 uh, on, on V2 nice. Records. Yes. Before that, I had like an early uh, repress, 
but when I got this OG, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so much better. There's so much more information there, and uh, it's clear and raw and strong. I, I really like this OG pressing. I really thank you very much for sending this so that I could hear it side by side with these other ones. Yeah. That brings us to this. Mm -hmm. So what did you think of this? I loved it. I think uh, it, it brought a whole new level. I think they were still able to to show, to translate the idea without stripping off the essence, which mean, which is this post-punk, uh, new wave kind of thing, garage rock from the early 2000s, which is like raw and simple, stripped down, uh, like an old blues band, like in the 30s, 40s, right? Playing very simple, even like with no uh, amps or mics or anything, just you just hear the guitar. So, uh, and, and the drum very, uh, this thumbs, this very simple approach. And I think the UHQ is just like, not cleaning it, but it's, it's bringing us right next to where the band is. And uh, feeling as if we're like, you know, like a, whatever, sitting in a garage or bonfire, or whatever, just listen to them playing, that's how it feels. You can feel like the air being pushed from, 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 from the kick drum, hitting you through your speakers. Uh, the voices are so, so clear. And, and to me, I had I had this impression that the sound stage felt like uh, as if if you if you've seen at their concerts, he's always like on the on the right side, the drums is here, and then he goes back and forth singing on the microphones, and, you know, and the drums go right in the center, guitar here, voice here, and that's how it feels. I mean, it's just amazing. What you just described is kind of what I was already trying to describe in a, in what I was referring to as like the 3D soundscape that people always refer to from either 45 RPM or from these Clarity Vinyl records. I love the way you described that about how that's basically how it would be seeing them live. Did you get a chance to see them live? You, you've seen them live? Yes, I saw them in 2007. Uh, it was the Iki Thumb tour. In, in April 2007, I think they they played their last show like in August or, or not not that many months after that. Wow! And uh, it was great. It was at the you uh, sneak right in there. Yes, what's the name of the uh, George Ma uh, George Mason University in Virginia? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I was wow. even in Maryland back then, and uh, I remember Ikithan came out. I went to pre-save. I, I bought those tickets. I waited for months to go see them. Nice. And uh, it was just amazing, like uh, the basketball court. It was just, I, I can't forget that show. It was Iki Thump, just so amazing, so amazing. And, and I hope uh, just, you know, um, Rocco, that this uh, presentation, the, the, the result they got of this record makes us like think forward, bringing other bands, bringing more innovative sounds, innovative approaches. I mean, just the spine being red. I like the ballads. He's really good at writing ballads, sentimental songs, and most of the songs are about like uh, bad, uh, um, gone bad relationships, right? Not not so happy ones. So, I think it's has been described as the the end of the American sweetheart or something. This is a single, a seven inch that came as a, as a supplement in the German magazine a few months ago called Music Express. So it's, it's a okay. seven inch. Side A is a seven nation army. And side B is Little Cream Soda, which was actually recorded as a demo in 2003. And this song only came out uh, on Icky Thump, 2007. Oh. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, it was one of those songs with the, with the word Little. Every, one, every single one of the records is a song with the word Little. And another, I think, very important single from this record is the hardest button to button. It's a very catchy, very simple blues riff. Uh, here's the, the single. Uh, this is an allusion to when he broke his finger during this tour. It's an amazing video. If you haven't seen the video for Hardest Button to Bottom, you should check it out. And it was actually, there was a parody of it on the Simpsons episode of Hardest Button to Bottom. <laughs> Bart Simpson becomes a drummer and starts playing and the, 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 the video repeats there. It's amazing. It's hilarious. Hey kid, why don't you watch where you're drumming? Sorry, White Stripes. No hard feelings? Let's kick his ass! Wrap up here. Other bands from, from that time period that just people forget about them. 
the Strokes, the Vines, the Hives, the Black, Lab, Black Rebel Motorcycle Club, Franz Ferdinand, Interpol, Black Keys, Killers, Libertines, CIAS, Cooks, Kaiser Chiefs, they're all from the same time period. And uh, those guys are already becoming legacy. So, you know, let's uh, forget about Steely then for a while. Let's move on. I hear that. And I mean, like, the Strokes has already got um, the reissue from Vonami Please, uh, which was a AAA um, mm-hmm. cut and it sounds amazing. Like I, I have it and it sounds really, really oh, good. Yeah. And it, oh, yeah. and it, and again, you know, it's, it's got me back into the strokes. It got me into this kind of stuff thinking to myself, you know, and I'm going to go look up the hives. I've never really listened to them before. But uh, if you want to get like a really cool 90 sound, if you want to get a really cool Nirvana pressing or even like a pro jam or even any of those bands I mentioned, they're rare, rare birds. We, we need that stuff uh, pressed and available. For, for us, you know. What would your fantasy UHQR be? I think since you're uh, in, in Seoul a lot too, I know you, you like and know Seoul, I think we desperately need good repressions of James Brown. I mean, have you ever, I mean, you, you listen to original James Brown, they're horrible. They sound horrible. I, I think the Blur records, they also deserve a good uh, Teenage Fun Club, Blur. These are bands like, they, they're well recorded, I mean, but it's, it's impossible to find a, a good record. And I think 2000s, to go back to the 2003 record, uh, I, I was kind of hoping what, this was going to be the release. Ben Harper, Diamonds on the Inside. It's, ah. it's, that thing is amazing. I love that record. And, uh, and this guy, he, he kills it. He's great. Felipe, I really want to thank you very much for sending uh, this OG pressing so that I could mm-hmm. compare these two things. I really, That's really, good. really appreciate that. Um, I'm um, going to have this sent back to you very soon. Cause I know you're probably missing your copy, but, um, but this is definitely amazing to listen to. So I I'm, was so excited that you wanted to reach out and be a part of like any of this. And I, I could really tell that you're a huge fan of them and that you want more people to know about this. And which is why I wanted to have you on here and just like Appreciate share it. your enthusiasm about this. So mm-hmm. I really think it's great that, that, you know, you came on and that you let me borrow this and that we got to talk about this. So thank you very much. No, thank you. Thank you so much for having me Rocco. I mean, I love this. I would love to, to talk as much as I can. And I think you're doing a great job uh, reviewing them, comparing, and um, it's not a content flag for my channel, for example. So I'm, I'm glad that I was able to come here and, and, and chime in a little bit. I'm, I'm really thrilled and flattered, and uh, thank you so much for, for having this. My final conclusion and opinions here are, if you already own the OG and it's in mint condition and you don't absolutely love this band, then you're good. It sounds amazing and you'll continue to enjoy this record. Maybe consider getting the newer 20th anniversary reissue since the smoke color is awesome and you could save your OG from some spins since it's also not that expensive. Consider the 20th anniversary edition if you're not interested in spending a lot on all these other copies. You're still getting a very good sounding record. You're also still supporting a really good record label and Jack White who does a lot for vinyl records. So it's really good just to support them as well. If somehow the Elephant Double X Vault Edition is your only copy, definitely go find an OG or the reissue or the UHQR. I would not have this as my only copy of this record. It's cool for what it is and the extras, but it's mostly for diehard fans who are already part of the vault. I would not recommend going after this on the aftermarket unless, again, you're a completist of this band or the label, which brings us to the UHQR. This is it. It's everything from the OG and more. Personally, I would get this over any represses just simply because I enjoy what these UHQRs are doing, but I'm sure you would be fine with a newer reissue as well if your wallet cannot spring it. Like I said, the 20th anniversary sounds fine, but know this. It's $170 for now, and they have 10,000 pressed. Once they're gone, this will easily climb to above $300 or more as time goes by. And that's not to say that you should consider it as an investment, just that it's gonna be that much harder to get later on down the road. Believe me, I really want the Axis Boulders Love UHQR Mono Edition, and that is like a couple car payments at this point. 
I really want to thank again Felipe for coming on and for also lending me his OG copy. I can't believe he even took the time to do that, to ship it to me and to make the payments on the shipping and everything like that. I mean, that is just such a kind thing to do. He's such a fan of this band and I really wanted to share his enthusiasm about this band. So I really hope that you guys got that from the interview. Go sub the Jazz Bums. Go hang out with them on Fridays for their live streams. They go on and on and on. It's a lot of fun. You get a lot of information on some really cool records. If you like this video, you're probably gonna like some others on this channel, like this one about the John Coltrane UHQR, or this one about an amazing soul story in Philadelphia. You definitely need to go check out this one. I will see you guys on the next one. This amazing UHQR.